today I'm talking about lyre leaf sage, lyre leaf sage. It's this plant that's growing all around me with these beautiful purple blooms. Um, it does have a square stem, but it's actually in the salvia family. Um, this is salvia lyrata is the botanical name. And this is a neat little flower. Um, it's not often used in herbal medicine, but I was doing some research on it because obviously I have a lot. There's fields, all this whole area around me. I'd say it's probably the most abundant flower on our property here, which is a limestone um, cedar glade, considered a limestone cedar glade. So very interesting um, endemic plants grow here. Now, lyre leaf sage is not an endemic plant. It does not just grow in this type of area. You'll probably find it in your um, in your grass, in your um, if you don't mow, that is. I've seen it just in a lot of different people's backyards um, when their grass started getting a little bit tall. And so, as I was researching this, hoping it was good for something, because I had heard that it was good for some things, um, I found number one that it's good for allergies. And if you mix um, one part stinging nettle, one part lyre leaf sage, and one part elder flowers, um, and you can actually add some goldenrod in there too if you wanted to, that this is a really effective remedy, herbal remedy, against seasonal allergies. The other thing that it's good for is if you wanted to make um, an infusion of the aerial parts. Now aerial parts means anything that is above ground. So this would be the aerial parts here. An infusion is just a fancy name for a tea. Okay, so I'll just say if you want to make a tea out of um, fresh or dried bloom tops and leaves here, it would be really good for coughs, colds, and um, anxiety disorders. It's somewhat calming and diaphoretic. So if you wanted to use it for that, um, you could use it for that. And then also I, I hear, I have not tried this um, myself so I can't tell you if it works exactly this way, but um, that if you rub the plant, if you were to take this plant and you were to rub it on your wart, a wart virus, um, twice a day for just a few days, that the wart would disappear within just a few days. So I would love if somebody would try that and kind of get back to me and let me know if that really works. Um, the reason it is called Lear Leaf Sage is obviously because it has this very distinct shape leaf, which is really neat. Um, a lyre being the instrument, the stringed instrument that was used in ancient times more often. So anyways, that is that is my little spiel on Lear Leaf Sage, and I'd love to hear back from you and see if any of you tried it and it worked, because I don't have allergies or warts, <laughs> and I don't usually get sick, so it's kind of hard for me to tell you um, that this would work firsthand, but I have heard from other people who've used it that it does indeed work for seasonal allergies, which is something you're probably hoping to find right now, so thank you for watching.